Hey what's going on guys, welcome back to another video. So I feel like now is an adequate time to be recording this one. Q4 is just seven-ish weeks away and think of this video as a personal message to you if you're watching this and you haven't started your business yet for whatever reason that may be. So I wanted to do this video to try and motivate you to do it sooner rather than later, to go over the things that you need to get in place so that when October 1st hits, then you are in a position to capitalize as much as possible on the biggest three months of the year. You can go back and look through some of my older YouTube videos that I uploaded um, three or four years ago. You can see the sales and how things took off for me. I documented it in detail. The very first Q4 I went through as a dropshipper and how it enabled me to leave my nine to five at the time and do dropshipping full time as my sole income. So it goes without saying Q4 is the biggest opportunity, at least in my opinion, the biggest opportunity for any aspiring dropshipper to make a real difference in their life if they are serious about changing things through the means of starting a dropshipping business. So if you are watching this video and you haven't started yet, then take this as your personal calling to do so sooner rather than later. So as part of the mentorship programs that I run for people each month, I do onboarding calls. I take calls on Google Meet to speak with the people who want help, one-to-one -one help in starting a business. And it's become apparent that most people research into dropshipping for many, many months. In fact, I spoke to somebody just a few days ago, which prompted me to do this video that they've been looking at dropshipping and watching me on YouTube for two years, for two years, and they still haven't started their business. And when I speak to people, it can be for a number of reasons. It's usually because they're not sure what product to select or they don't know what the starting point is. So I'm going to go through all of that in this video and let you know how to pick a niche, how to pick a product inside that niche, and then the following steps you need to take to get that business up and running and into fruition so you can make the most of the seven weeks you have to basically get your ducks in order, get everything lined up. So when Q4 starts, you're ready and in a position to make the most of it because those three months, a good three months in dropship shipping can set you up for the rest of the year. In the next seven weeks then, basically you're going to go through a process of selecting a niche, selecting the products, getting all your different accounts and things like that set up, which in its own right can sometimes take two or three weeks, depending on how it goes. Um, a lot of new Facebook ad accounts will still get banned until you verify them and you have to send ID or request reviews, which can sometimes take a week or so. You do not want to be doing and going through those processes that you can do now, even if you get them set up and just name them something generic. You don't necessarily have to have a Shopify store to link them to. You can get your business manager, you can get your ad account, and all those things set up now so they're ready to go second you've selected that niche product and built that store so just getting things lined up if you're new to this is probably going to take you two weeks doing that on october 1st you're going to miss half of that very first month of q4 which is not ideal in my very first q4 it was actually october which was the biggest month out of the three because if you are drop shipping Ideally, you'd like to get yourself in a point of October 1st where you have the option of sourcing your products private labeled in a bulk quantity with them sat on a shelf somewhere with a logo on so you look more professional and your profit margins are better for the most profitable three months of the year anyway. But if you are drop shipping, then you basically you can only really make the most of the first sort of 10, maybe maybe two weeks of December, depending on where your products are located, because of course you have to account for the delivery times. So it's probably gonna take you two weeks or so to get everything lined up, ready to go. So in those seven weeks we have between now and October 1st, it's gonna take you a week or two or so to get all your accounts set up, a Shopify store built, that sort of thing, which then basically leaves you four to five weeks to test products find something that has that validation validate an idea a business a brand a product that works and three or four weeks of good sales is somewhat of a strong enough argument to argue that a product and idea and brand is validated ideally you want as long as possible obviously if you sell a product successfully for three weeks that is not 
as much as a validation as selling a product successfully for three months. So the sooner you can get up and running and selling, the longer you have to essentially test a product and make sure it works before you commit and, and reinvest into it ready for Q4. So if it takes you a week or two to get set up and then a week or two before your first orders start getting delivered, we're three or four weeks down the line with just three weeks left until Q4. So it might be that you only have three weeks notice before you find out that you've got issues with the quality of the product or issues with the suppliers. There's a whole bunch of different things that could go wrong along the way that you need to get out of the way sooner rather than later. And the only way you do that is by starting. You will never, ever, ever be able to start a business and not come across these issues, these teething issues. You will have to go through them at some point, at one time or another. So better to do it now than in the biggest and busiest and potentially most profitable months of the year. So when it comes to the starting point, the starting point should be the niche. And this niche should be something close to your own heart. If you own cats, go to the cat niche. If you own dogs, go to the dog niche. If you play golf, go to the golf niche. Whatever you find yourself spending time in because you enjoy doing it, go into that niche. When I say niche, I don't mean pets. Pets is not a niche. That is such a massive, massive audience. I don't even mean dogs either. I mean specific breeds. We live in a day and age now where when you're advertising on social media platforms, especially, you're going to be competing for people's attention, not only other advertisers, but their friends on social media and real life distractions different apps or games or WhatsApp messages or phone calls, whatever it may be, you're competing for their attention. So the product you sell, the creative you use to sell that product, it has to land as well as possible with that person. Otherwise they will forget it within the next two or three seconds. So to give you an example, right? Um, take myself, or we'll take myself, say I'm trying to advertise a product to me. I'm trying to sell myself a product. And I'm scrolling through Facebook one day and I come across two ads over the course of the day. Both are within the golf niche and both are trying to sell me a head cover. So one is trying to sell me just a generic leather, looks quite nice, in its own right, a decent head cover. But then later on in the day, I see a head cover and it's in the shape and in the design of a German Shepherd. And I own a German Shepherd. So when I'm considering buying a head cover or which one do you think I'm more likely to remember or which one do you think I'm more likely to stop on and consider buying? The generic golfing head cover, which is in its own right a nice product, but there's nothing that kind of unique about it. Or am I more likely to be interested in, in the German Shepherd head cover because I play golf and I have a German Shepherd. That product is so much more specific for me. I'm much more likely to notice it and therefore much more likely to buy it. So think the same when you are picking a product. Don't try and think I'm gonna sell a product to dog owners. Think I'm gonna try and sell a product to people who own pugs. What I've found over the years is that in a similar way with kids that people love their own kids, but they don't necessarily like other people's kids. It's the same thing with dogs. People absolutely love and dote on their own dogs, especially if they're different breed dogs too. So somebody who owns a pug, they probably don't like German Shepherds because they're complete polar opposites in terms of the dog breed scale. So trying to sell a product that applies to every single dog owner the message, the creative, the product is probably not going to land very well. But if you are selling a product that is specific for pug owners or specific for German Shepherd owners or specific for rescue dogs, that message, that marketing angle is so much more specific. It's much more likely to land and have an impact and steal your audience's attention to get eyeballs on it. It's all about picking a product that somebody feels so connected to, that it resonates so specifically with them, that they just have to stop and think this product is made for me. And when you find products like that, that is when you can make a significant amount of money. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel by the way yet, make sure you do because I've got a lot more information coming very shortly on product selection. So if you haven't picked a product yet, I'm gonna do a specific video going over the two different types of products, which is trending versus products that people have never seen before.
I talk about pet products all the time, so let's take a different example. Um, the jewelry niche, jewelry niche is massive at Christmas because it's a perfect gift. Instead of thinking jewelry though, think jewelry for a specific recipient. So think jewelry aimed at grandparents or jewelry aimed at grandchildren. Even better, grandchildren because it's grandparents that tend to be the biggest market on Facebook. So consider the platform that you're going to be advertising on as well. Instead of thinking kids toys, obviously self-explanatory Q4, kids toys, massive, massive niche, you're going to spike massively in Q4, a great niche to go into. But instead of trying to sell a toy to every single kid out there, go for something specific. So go for education, or go for building, go for something that has a genuine unique selling point. The next point I want to touch on as well is that your first product will probably lose your money. It's a fact for probably 90% of the people that are watching this video unfortunately. So again, don't start this on October 1st, start it now. Every test, every product you test, as long as you make sure you identify the reasons it went wrong or lost you money before you test the next product, you'll naturally get better at selecting and testing products. And as long as you continue to get better, you will eventually get to the point where you are skillful enough to identify the products and advertise them in a profitable way. So this is how important it is to start now because naturally there will be teething issues that you go through before you get to a point in which your business is turning over 10k per month. There will be teething issues that you have to go through that are completely outside of your control and you just have to deal with them as you get to them. You'll have teething issues with suppliers. Not all suppliers out there are equipped to deal with certain levels of demand. That leads to also quality issues too. Trust me, you do not want a quality issue in the middle of Q4 because it's such a massive risk to take. You haven't got time to switch to another supplier, order a sample, and make sure everything lines and marries up before you continue selling. You're gonna waste two or three weeks of the biggest time of the year. So it's so important that you make sure you have a good supplier lined up, ready to fulfill, and you know what their quality is like because you've already sold 100 units of it. When you go through these teething issues as well, the person who pays the price is gonna be your customer. This is gonna to lead to customer service inquiries. Again, you want to get familiar with the sorts of questions customers ask you, the sorts of issues that customers have, so that when Q4 comes and your business scales and you're doing one, two, three, four, 5K a day, depending on how things go, you want to be equipped and have the processes and maybe even the staff, the virtual assistants in place to help you deal with those problems and of course we have the potential issues with ad accounts which everybody is probably familiar with it's naturally something people go through but if you're a legitimate business and you're not setting it up in a dodgy name or trying to scam facebook you shouldn't have any issues it won't stop you getting banned but it will make sure that when you request that review you get your ad account back within a week or two often in most cases it's within 24 or 48 hours and so with that being said, I've covered everything I wanted to. Apologies if you saw me keep looking away. I'm looking at my computer. I've made some notes to make sure I covered everything. Um, I've gone through the entire list. I really hope that I've motivated at least one of you to start your business now. Start it today. Find a product. Do not worry about getting it right on the first go. Just make sure that you get things up and running because if you want to be a successful dropshipper, you have to get good at running a dropshipping business. It's pretty self-explanatory. But the only way you get good at doing something is by doing it. You will not become a good dropshipper by watching YouTube video after YouTube video after YouTube video. There will come a point in which a problem arises that you will not be equipped to deal with, but that's just part of running a business. You have to become a good problem solver. And so with that being said, guys, thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate the support on the channel recently. Any comments, questions, video suggestions, anything along those lines, just leave it down below. I see every single one, so I will respond back to you. If you are interested in a one-to-one -one mentorship, just check out the link in the video description below. Thanks.